Today we are painting this spray of flowers, so stick around if you'd like to learn how. So today what we need is our large brush, this is the number 16 round, and if you want a smaller detail brush, you can do something like a number six. You can even take something that's thinner. I have a number two here, so you can use one of those. We're just gonna kind of play around, do some flowers, do some details. We have our water, our paints, our sketchbook, and um, a good attitude. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, we're gonna do a very watery mix of purple. I feel like I have to catch my breath. Sometimes you just gotta take a deep breath and just relax, especially if you've been rushing around and doing all those things. So we're gonna start with our large bloom a little to the left of the center because we want to make things look really organic, um, not matchy matchy, not like within the center or like for here, you know, making everything look all the same. We want things to be interesting to the eye. So we're just gonna start with a thin mark here and then we're gonna pull out a petal from there. And it's okay if it's a little bit um, jaggedy, that's actually really pretty. And then we'll do one right here as well. We want to save that center part, keep that pretty open and clear so that we can add in a really sweet middle. And then I'm going to dip my brush in water, squeegee it, and we're just going to do a really light version of that paint right here on this petal. So on this flower, there's actually a lot of petals. I'm gonna dip back into my paint angle my brush this way because we do want the angle of the brush to be the same for all the flowers that we're painting. All right, and then there's actually some petals underneath as well. And well, let's add in this one too. So there's just like a little bit of a petal underneath. I'm just gonna add some of that in too. And I'm leaving white space just to kind of keep um, some distance between the petals so that we know where one starts and one ends. And we'll just kind of leave it like that for now. So now we have sort of a tulip happening. We have a cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna put that on my palette. There's already some orange there, that's great. I wanted a yellowy orange color. So we'll work with that. A little bit yellow, a little bit of orange, a little bit of water. And we'll just add that guy over on this side, of our flower. And he's just kind of facing this way, facing this way, facing down. So I've got this petal here and dipping off, getting rid of some of my water, making it a little bit lighter. There's a petal happening right here too. And we just have this really billowy, lacy top, I guess you could call it, uh, a little bit more. And I love working with a reference photo. It just gives, I feel like it gives a lot more confidence. So if you don't work with reference photos now, I highly, highly encourage you to start. It really is going to increase your confidence in what you feel like you can create. If you don't need a reference photo, wonderful, that's okay. You don't need to paint with one. Now we have sort of a kind of a, run, a ranunculus or peony thing happening right here. It is orangey, um, but it's a little bit darker. We can use this reddish orange color. I like that color a lot. So holding that brush very loosely, we're just going to, that's probably, I'm gonna dab my brush because it's probably too wet. So we're just gonna make a little center here. And this kind of flower has so many tight petals, so many tight petals. Just going around. We want to do these C-curve shapes in a way that they are not symmetrical and you're just kind of randomly putting them down. And then we're gonna start and it's gonna look a little bit like a rose too, and it may look like a rose in the end, but they have similar petals happening. So I'm gonna push down right here to make thicker petals, and there's a few that are coming out like that. So we'll just add that together. All right, so I'm going to dip into my water and to rinse my brush, dab it, and I'm just going to take some of that clean water and spread out a little bit on just these edges make it a little bit more of a softer edge right there. Now this tulip, keep in mind that it is, it's just really kind of opening. So that's why it's such a large shape. 
All right, we're gonna do some red now. I'm dipping into this really bright fire engine red that I have. I have some pink mixed on here. So in the end of this, it's not gonna be this really, really bright red because I'm going to add a little bit of the orangey red and lots of water. Okay. So let's go ahead. I like to say that. Let's go ahead. And I think we're gonna do a rose down here. So same type of thing, you know, little C curve shapes. C curve, that's a C curve. This is the backwards C curve. Little C curve shapes. You start to press down a little bit more as you start to get larger with your bloom. So your petals are getting a lot bigger. And this, this one is actually facing away. So you're gonna see a lot more of these petals and less of this one. And this one's kind of facing down, I should say. So I have a little bit right there. And that would be our rose. So, okay. I'd like to do something right here. I'm thinking maybe kind of like a, like a snapdragon. So we'll do some pink paint over here in our purple well. Just mix them together. It's all good. It's very, very bright. And I'm just going to just do like little kind of blobs of color. Blobs and sort of emulating petals a little bit. And then a little bit less as we keep going up towards the tip. And that is just a little bit at the top there. So I think I'm going to do a few um, down here as well. Because I want to have this really beautiful pink color on these three quadrants that we have. And a little bit here too. See how easy this is? Once we connect it with some stems, you'll see how beautiful this can be. So now I'm gonna take that number two brown round brush that I told you guys about, just dipping into whatever green I have. And we're literally going to just make a really, really thin stem just through this and connecting our little blooms together just like so sorry my chair is so squeaky i definitely need to tighten it i think because it's got a lot of creaking happening and do some little leaves too just little blobs just little blobs making this very easy simple not thinking too hard about it not worrying about it just enjoying the process all right connect those guys together And then I think a little bit more leaves will be in order. So you don't have to think too hard about this, just adding in that color. As you can see, it's starting to come together really nicely. We're gonna do some leaves and I'm gonna prepare my green. I have a sap green here. Mix that out. And with the sap green, I'm gonna want to add in, uh, let's do some cadmium yellow. And we don't want to contaminate our yellows, so we try to do a pretty clean brush before we dip into the yellow. After dipping into some other color, yellow definitely contaminates fast and easily, unfortunately. So, all right, we're just gonna do some, we're gonna do a stem and then we're gonna do some really just kind of fun leaves. So just gonna push down, making that leaf shape with the belly of the brush and kind of whatever shape comes out of it, I'm just using that brush for that. And some, if you go really slow, you can get a nice point as well. And then maybe run a little bit more here. Okay, and over here, I'm gonna do, that with the tip of the brush, thin stem, and just add in some leaves from there and on this side as well. So you could start with a stem and add leaves, or you can connect them to a stem after you've added. I like to do both. And then a little bit more here on this side. Just to fill out this part a bit. Okay. And then on this side, I think I'd like to do kind of a bluish little bluish. I've got some green on my brush and that blue is going to create kind of a, 
a little bit of a grayish blue, I guess. Uh, and I'm gonna actually switch my brush to a number six so we can get a little bit of a, a different a different shape. Okay, so I'm gonna put one over here. Really thin stem, a little bit of leaves, and then just connecting those together right there. And I'm leaving a little white space in the middle, as you can see. I think that that can create a really beautiful look. Again, the slower that you lift up from your leaf shape, the pointier it's going to be. If you wanted to do some small foliage here too, it would be a great time to do it. Up to you, up to you. I always wanna say this is your painting and you should really thoroughly enjoy the process of what you're creating. You really, you really just have to also kind of let go of your expectations about what you want it to be. I mean, especially as you're starting out, you might have some huge expectations of how you hope things will be. And you know what? Just let go of those and say, you know, I'm just here to have a good time today. We'll see where this takes me today. And remind yourself, this is great practice. You are doing well because you sat down to paint today. That is an accomplishment in and of itself in our busy days and our busy lives. So if you sat down to paint, you have won. <laughs> you are doing well. And if you don't have time to paint every day, that's okay. You know, to practice, the more you practice, the more time you put in something, obviously the more you improve, but also you don't want this to be a stressful thing where you feel like you must do this every day um, without fail, even if you don't feel like it. If you don't feel like it, you're just gonna ruin your experience for yourself and you don't want that, so no worries. Allow yourself to just paint as often or as little as you want or need. Um, just add in a little bit to fill in that white space, creating a little bit of fullness like leaves right there. So now we're gonna do our center for this guy. It's really, really cool. So we have a brown color that we're going to use. And I'm starting to stipple in the middle of this. I'm probably not gonna leave that much white space. So we're gonna stipple some green around this. Just a little bit of white space is pretty. Okay, and rinse your brush. And now we're gonna take our green. So I'm gonna make a little bit more dark green. We will take the dark green to stipple around the brown that we've put down. And that's just gonna be a really, really pretty fancy middle. Okay, so there's in this reference photo that I'm looking at, there's just a lot of these little stippling, kind of stippling, I mean, it's not stippling, it's a real photo, but little round pieces that make up the middle, it's so pretty. And of course we have to do our lines now. This is dry enough that I can do that. Instead of it doing a second color, like a dark color all over some of the petals we're going to do we're going to take our liner brush if you have this or a thin number one or number two definitely take that and we're going to dip into our kind of a purpley pink color here use what you have but we're going to start adding in some beautiful veins for our flower and that's where our flowers start to come alive when we add in those beautiful vein shapes and we're con using it with the contour of the petal. So if, we, if the petal is going out like this, we're going out. If it's straight, we're going straight. And just creating a really beautiful, beautiful floral design with our petal line details. So we'll get some over here too. And feel free to put in as much or as little as you want for these connect our petals that one wasn't connected as much so let's connect it there a little bit we can also do some lines on the sides here of our petals or sorry the ends of our petals and that's really pretty you can do some darker some lighter some you can do more than others and now we have a very fancy fancy floral so I'm gonna take my number six round again and we're just gonna add in a little bit more to these flowers that we have. So here, this one is kind of an orangey, 
reddish color. I'm just gonna take this right here and I'm going to add in a little bit darker areas for just creating some shadows and we're going to blend them in. So we have, if you look at your roses, ranunculus is whatever, you're gonna see, and even on the real flower, you're gonna see various lightness and darkness um, values. Uh, and you want to see there's gonna be shadow parts and there's gonna be parts that are lighter that are actually hanging out in the light. So we wanna emulate that when we can. I'm gonna add in some more cadmium yellow. Ooh, that's bright. I like that though. And then add in a lot of water because I just want a very light value of this. Um, and I'm just gonna add in, I'm just gonna darken up some of these petal spaces here. Add in a little bit of this emulation of fluffy lacy petals. Okay, our tulip that's opening. And then for this guy, we're gonna do that same reddish color. I'm gonna add a little bit more pink though. Just a little more pink. I do the same thing, adding in some darker parts. That's really dark. And then we're just going to blend it with some fresh water. If you create everything in the same color, the same value, the same lightness or darkness, it's gonna look really flat. So you want to do two or three values. Three would be best, a light color, a medium, and then a dark one for shadows. So for our leaves, we have our blue. I'm just gonna do a little bit, a little bit more of this darkening up of our leaves. You can leave them light, that's fine too. It's up to you. And these guys here I think might be a little wet, but you can still paint over it, that's okay. And I think for the rest of it, um, we're needing some splatter and we're done. So dip your brush in paint, do a little bit of splatter right there. If you have a smaller brush, your splatter will be lighter, or sorry, smaller. A little bit of splatter and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed creating this uh, spray of flowers. And once it's dry, you can always add a little more detail if you want to. But thanks for painting. I'll talk to you later.